once Donatus's killer is caught and everything returns back to normal. Speaking of which, shouldn't you be heading back to Corinth Tower soon? Excuse me, sir. Uh, Mr. Prescott, district attorney, is here. Oh, what? what for? Well, he insists on speaking with Mr. Alden Sr. But if he's unavailable, I'm here on urgent business stemming from the Nick Donatos murder. Thank you, Soames. Uh, very well, sir. I'll get right to the point, Mr. Alden. Your whole family could be in for serious trouble. Nettie. Uh, I don't know. Oh, come on now. It'll be fun. I happen to know that your big sister will be out high-stepping tonight. Yes, they're leaving you all by your lonesome lordy. Well, if she can go out and get herself wined and dined, why can't you? The press is out for blood. There are reporters all over the place, including my office, digging for anything they can find. What they really want is dirt on the Aldens. Do the others know where this probing could lead? Well, if you mean, do they know about the deal you made with Cabot? Yes, they do. Ah, uh, I can see I need to set you straight on that. There was no deal. Oh, and tell me just what would you call it? I was approached by Cabot Alden on behalf of his family, requesting I not push for a retrial on the Sawalski kid's statutory rape charge. I made no guarantees, I simply listened. The fact of the matter is, a crowded court calendar prevented me from taking any further action on the case. Well, I don't understand. Why would Cabot even make that request? What does the Alden family stand to gain by having you not pursue the case? You want to answer that? <laughs> Emotional blackmail. The Aldens knew they could push for a retrial just as easily as they requested it be dropped. Of course, whether they did or not depended on Tricia. She had a promise not to see Steve. They knew just how to press her to keep her from uh, stepping out of line. Didn't you, Mrs. Alden? What the hell is your point? I want it understood I did absolutely nothing wrong. And I intend to issue a public statement to that effect. Clear the air once and for all of rumor and innuendo about there having been a deal made. That's it? That's what you came here to tell us? Not quite. I intend to go on record that we're fully prepared for a retrial. I'm ready to prosecute Sawalski at any time. Well, I don't see that there's any point in that now. That's right. If Stephen Sawalski killed Nick Donatos, he's going to spend the rest of his life in jail anyway. Steve didn't kill Nick. And he didn't rape Cecilia either. Doesn't anybody care about the truth? Trisha, darling, no you one You railroaded here. Steve then, and you're going to do the same thing now? That's why I left this house in the first place. I hate this family. <laughs> I'm sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Sawalski, but uh, I thought you should know that because of potentially damaging circumstances, I'll be informing the press and public that the district attorney's office is ready to open the statutory rape case against your husband. What? You mean there'd be a retrial? If necessary, yes. Why? I, I don't understand. Well, it's complicated, and I'll explain, but first, I want to make sure that you understand the importance of this situation as it affects you. Affects me? But Steve would be the one who'd stand trial. If there is a trial. I, I doubt if my statement will generate that much outcry. After all, it is an old case. However, the way you've been played in the media, there's a lot of public sympathy for you. The press won't leave me alone. Well, after all, a love triangle ending in murder is news. Besides, you're the only sympathetic figure in this whole mess. But what does that have to do with Steve being tried again for rape? The public is on your side, Cecilia. And whether or not Steve's trial comes up for a second time depends entirely on you. And that's where we stand at the moment. As you can see, there's any number of possibilities. But only one that makes any sense. Steve Sawalski. Well, she's right at the top of my list. Yes, why haven't you arrested him? There's a lot of loose ends here. The evidence is purely circumstantial. Look, I realize that you're the district attorney. Yes. And if I'm willing to prosecute on the available evidence, why should you drag your feet? 
Now, you listen to me, Lieutenant. The media is riding my tail on this thing. Every day it goes on, I look worse. With all due respect, you're the one who cut the deal with Cabot Alton, not me. OK, OK, I made a mistake. But now's the time to rectify it. Even if it means prosecuting Stephen Sawalski for a homicide he may not have committed. You got the evidence, for God's sake. Here it is. Now quit jerking around and make that arrest. Harry, as soon as Steve is processed at headquarters, they're going to bring him over here. In that courtroom, Sam? That's right. Before a magistrate. It's the preliminary hearing. Sweetheart, please, let Jack and me take you home. I'd be glad to do it, Trisha. Trisha, there's nothing you can do for Stephen at this point. Well, I can see him. I can tell him that I love him. Maybe I can even talk to the judge. Out of the question, Trisha. Sure. Baby, what would be the point? The point is that Steve confessed to save me. Don't you see? Steve didn't kill Nick. He couldn't have. <laughs> to take the pressure off of him. He tried to claim he did it so they wouldn't arrest me. But, sweetheart, who could possibly believe that you would do such a thing? I know what you're saying, but the evidence the police has... Mr. Sawalski, you don't think he did it, do of you? Of course not, Trisha. I mean, if it would have happened that way, he would have told of me. Of course he would have. Trisha, how could you have known anything? You didn't see anything. You weren't there. He would have told me, Mother. We don't keep secrets from each other anymore. We tell each other everything. Trisha, I'm certain that that's true, but we are talking about a... A murder confession here. Face the facts. You really think my boy did it, don't you? Take it easy, Harry. She just meant... I know damn well what she meant. Could work out great for you, couldn't it? Donato's out of the way. Stevie sent up to prison for God knows Look, how long. Look, Harry, I merely said... I know what you merely said. You're the first one to accuse my boy of everything, and I'm sick of it. And I don't have to listen to this. Mr. Fletcher... Please go to the police. Explain to them. Explain what, Tricia? That Steve is doing this for me. I don't think they'd listen to me. Why not? Because the confession is not the only element. The police have more evidence. Damn it. Gwen, what's the matter with you? She's upset enough as it is. Honey, let me take you home with me. Stacy can keep you company until you hear something about Steve. Grandfather. Oh, God. Came as soon as I could. Anything I can do? I don't think so. Not at the moment. Cradle been set? They're bringing him up in a minute. Skyler, I want you to assist Mr. Fletcher in any way you can. Oh, Grandfather, thank you. All right, if that's Steve's wish, and uh, Mr. Fletcher agrees. I'm going to need all the help I can get. Good. Now, about bail. It'll be set by the magistrate at the hearing. Then let me offer to postpone. You mean, if there is one. You should know, Counselor, I'm going to strongly urge that bail be denied. In fact... Steve! Steve! And so, Your Honor, I ask that reasonable bail be set. Mr. Prescott, if the court please, the defendant has a record of felony conviction aggravated by jailbreak. He now appears before you on a charge of homicide, which charge is buttressed by the fact I don't that... want you to argue your case here, Mr. Prescott. Simply tell me how you respond to the motion. The people urge that bail be denied, Your Honor, in view of the seriousness of the charge and the defendant's prior record. What's happening? They're arguing about bail. I wouldn't get my hopes up, Trisha. Homicide case, especially when the defendant has a criminal record. Mr. Pletcher. Your Honor, I am confident that this defendant would not try to flee the jurisdiction of the court. He knows the seriousness of the charge. He voluntarily surrendered himself to the authority. He made a confession, Your Honor. Please proceed, Mr. Fletcher. As I was about to say, Mr. Sawalski has, since his release from prison, proven himself to be a model member of the community. He has successfully made the transition from prison to normal society. And may I add, that the very fact that he surrendered himself without fleeing when he knew himself to be under suspicion... Your Honor, I cannot let that go unchallenged. This defendant has a history of running away. He escaped from prison, he fled to Canada, 
and on the night in question he was stopped for speeding by a police officer which suggests that he was trying to get away might suggest it but it doesn't prove it well there are certainly elements in his confession which indicate that he and a young woman were seriously considering running away the night nick donatos was murdered i'm going to grant your motion mr fletcher and set bail uh mr prescott do you have any recommendations as to the amount what can i say your honor as high as possible very well then bail is set at five hundred and fifty thousand dollars is the defendant prepared to post the bond he is your honor personally mr cabot alden wishes to post bond on stephen sawalski's behalf very well then so ordered the defendant will be remanded into custody until such time as this is done court is adjourned Look at your hair. I know, it won't behave, and it hurts to comb. Then try this. Oh, Steve. Pop, what are you doing here? You're not the only one that got called in to testify before the grand jury. I can't believe it. Me being called in to testify against my own boy. Well, look, just tell the truth and don't even feel guilty about it. Hey, what, are you kidding me or something? Pop, no matter what you say, it's not going to make that big a difference. If they're going to indict me, it's going to be because I confess. Which is the craziest damn thing you've ever done. Listen to me, son, it's not too late. You can still take it back, Stevie. You know you didn't kill Nick Donatos. Look, Pop, you're just saying that to cover up for right. Trisha. It's the nuttiest thing you're doing to sell yourself down the river like this. Listen to me. You're looking at the rest of your life in prison. You go in there, you tell the judge you're going to take back your confession. I can't. Now look, no matter what you think, I killed Nick Donatos. Now listen, kid. When you get called in... Yeah, wait a minute, Sam. Aren't you going in there with them? I can't, Harry. It's a grand jury hearing. It's just a simple presentation of evidence. The counsel for the defense is not allowed in. Then why are you here? Just explaining the procedure. I want to be sure that you understand that you can refuse to testify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to take one more shot at getting you to take your confession back. Look, no way, Sam. Get it. Come on, Steve. Will you please listen to him? The only reason you made that confession was to cover for Trisha, to try to keep her from going to jail. Look, I told you that is not true. It's you... It's like talking to a stone wall. Steve, if you do not recant, they're going to indict you. It's as simple as that. I know. What well, do you understand what that means? Yeah. I'm not sure you do. When this case goes to trial, you don't have a snowball's chance in hell. You're going back to jail, son. <laughs> When feeling really clean and fresh is most important, there's Summer's Eve post-menstrual douche with the natural ingredient, Natricel. For the most effective cleansing, just right for post-menstrual use, Summer's Eve post-menstrual douche. We all have our beauty secrets. Mine? Well, it's not this hair. It's a diet soft drink. I don't mean Diet Pepsi or Diet Coke. It's crystal light. Mm. Perfect after exercise, or even just thinking about exercise. Mmm, terrific taste. And this little beauty's only four calories. Crystal Light Diet Soft Drink Mix. 100% NutriSweet. And that's my secret. I see. And what caliber of gun killed Nick Donatos? It was a 38, sir. Thank you. No further questions. You may step down. The district attorney now wishes to call Millard Charlie Wilson. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. State your name. Millard Charlie Wilson. Please be seated. Good 
Good morning, Mr. Wilson. Good morning. Would you please tell the jury where you work and in what capacity? I'm a night security guard at Alden Enterprises. I see. And were you on duty the night Nick Donatos was murdered at the River Palace Casino? Yes, sir. Would you please tell the jury if anything unusual occurred that uh, night during your shift? Well, uh, Steve Sawalski came by to pick up something at his father's office. Harry, uh, his father, is head of security at the company. Did Steve say what he'd come by to get? No. Did you accompany him to his father's office? No. You mean you let him go up all alone? Well, his father's my boss. Uh, I didn't want Harry getting sore at me for giving his kid a hard time. I understand. Now, about how long would you say Steve Sawalski was up in his father's office? Um, just a couple of minutes, I guess. When he left, did he indicate to you whether or not he had found what he was looking for? Yeah, he, he said he did. And then what? Well, then he left. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. No further questions. You may step down. The district attorney calls Harry J. Sawalski. How would you describe your son's state of mind that night you found him with Jenny Baylor? How do I know what his state of mind was? There must have been some outward indications, Mr. Sawalski. He must have said something that gave you a clue. Now, Miss Baylor had just told him Trisha Alden was in danger. How did he react he to that? He was upset, okay? And what did he do after Jenny revealed the situation? He left. He took off. I see. Now, it's my understanding, Mr. Sawalski, that you're in the habit of keeping a gun in your office. Is that right? Yeah. What? Yes! Where is that gun now? I don't know. You mean it just disappeared? That's right. When did you first notice it was missing? Please answer the question, Mr. Sawalski. The day after the Nanos was shot. And when was the last time you saw it? The afternoon of the murder. So it seems reasonable to say that sometime between the afternoon of the murder and the following morning, someone entered your office and removed Look, I know what you're getting at, Prescott. Sure, my boy could have taken my gun, but that doesn't mean he killed Donatos. What caliber is your gun, Mr. Sawalski? What caliber? It's a 38. Thank you. No further questions. They're trying to bury my boy. That's what this is all about. Why don't you ask me the right questions? Why don't you ask me what I did when Stevie left the house? I'll Mr. tell you. Sawalski. I went ask him. I went to the River Palace Casino looking for him. He wasn't Please there. Step he down, wasn't Mr. in the parking Sawalski. lot. Nowhere did my boy kill the Step I'm down. down. Please, Steve. Please take back your confession when you go in there. Trisha. Oh, I can't.